Hi, Martin here. Today I'm going to do a battery relocate. I'm going to move this battery and get rid of most of the tray. I just got to retain the part of the tray that holds the fuse block. And the reason I'm mainly doing this, if you ever worked on a 4.7 on a Jeep Grand Cherokee, to get under the valve cover on the uh, right side, you got to you have to remove the battery and the tray amongst some other stuff that gets in your way. So, and it also cleans up the engine compartment a lot. And, and it kind of, there's another advantage here, where I'm moving the battery, it's going to move the weight more toward the rear, which is better. And this is also part two of my battery tuck. If you've seen the one I did before, that was on the uh, left side valve cover, the wires that go across that. All right, so let's get started. So we're going to go from something that looks just like this to, to this. I got the battery box here started. So here I got the base of it, two of the sides. I'm going to tack weld this stuff into place, get it all tack welded in, and then tack weld this side in. And that way we got us a box right there. Get this area all prepped to cut a hole right there. Okay, I've removed the entire back seat, the seat, and the back. And what I've done is taken bungee straps, tied it around whatever. You may have to cut a small hole in the carpet where I did right here. This is the flap that goes way down here, so it's not going to matter. And then I use bungee straps just to pull the carpet out of the way, attaching it whatever I could find like that and then I'm just attaching the vehicle and that way it pulls carpet out of the way because we're going to be doing some cutting and welding in here so we definitely want to keep the carpet away from any heat source and right here if you look carefully you see this black line going right across there Right underneath there, that is where the gas line is. So what I've done, done is drawn it up here so I know, you know, I don't want to get close to that. I know where everything's at as far as anything that's going to cause any kind of problem, especially a gas line. Now, with the battery box, but it, I can fit it in here like so. So that's what we're going to go with. Um, so I'm going to have to cut out a portion of this here. And I'm not going to be getting rid of this part of it. Just some of this right in here. Ten and a half inches of it. And then of course we're cutting a hole right there.
Okay, I got it to this point right now. Now, drop this. Now, you're taking little chunks out at a time. It's really hard to figure out where to cut because of the contour of this, and you got, you know, this to cut, and it's hard to just cut it out one time and voila. It doesn't seem to work too well. But I got it to this point right here. You can see it's pretty tight there. Now, of course, we got to drop it this much more. Now, I'll show you what I got underneath. Okay, right there. Now, you can see we're up here against the seam. Now that I got to this point right now, and it's resting on this lip back here, we can scribe a line and get that. As soon as we get this and this cut, this should drop on down. Now, as it drops down, we may have, we we'll probably have to remove some material here then. Then we'll get that line in and that cut. box welded into place. And let me tell you, welding 22 gauge steel is not all that easy. I mean, you're like welding a daggone tin can, you know? It, it wants to blow away. And I don't have a lot of experience welding that light of a metal. So it, was, uh, it took me forever to uh, get it welded in here. The welds don't look all that great. Um, there's no, no doubt it's going to hold. I'm not worried about that. And I'll, I'll show you a little bit of that. And what I'm using here is some liquid tape. Uh, it's kind of like a rubberized. It dries really quick. Got a rubberized coating. And this is just to seal up any of these little pinholes. And uh, like I say, it dries relatively quick, so you can come back and put another coat on like in 20 minutes or so. And here you can see where I applied the uh, liquid tape on there, around the welds, all the seams, seals everything up. With the battery box installed, getting got to the point where we're going to put the battery cable in. Now, I was at a friend's house. He's got a Dodge Magnum. And I noticed the battery is mounted in the back, in the trunk area. And <laughs> that's cool. So, I went up to pick a part. And not only the Magnums, but the 300s and the uh, Chargers all got the battery mounted in the back from 2005 on up, as far as I can tell. And so I got the chunk of cable here, and this is one gauge welding cable. It says right on it, welding cable. It comes with a really nice connector already on there if you want to utilize that, okay? I like this, it's simple. And you know, it's got this terminal on here as well, which is cool. Now. The, all three models of the Dodges that have this 
the cable is exactly the same length and it's more than enough for this um, in fact I'm gonna have to shorten this up and probably put a new ring terminal on now when it gets up to this ring terminal which is underneath the floorboard on the uh, right side of the vehicle under the carpet right where you put your feet for the passenger that's where you're gonna find this here that attaches to this little block okay and it goes on there like so it goes right through the basically through the firewall or the floorboard of the vehicle then so then on the other side it basically in the wheel well area it attaches to this cable here which splits off and then one goes to the fuse block up front then this end here goes down to the starter which goes up from there to the alternator so I bought all that too and I don't know if that's necessary yet or if I'm going to use just parts of this because length issues you know how it's going to change and I'm going to make it as short as possible no sense having a bunch of extra cable if you don't need it right but uh, I'll show you what we got going on all right all right now let's go ahead and remove the battery tray there are four bolts that hold the tray on one here here one behind the fuse block and one right here all 10 millimeter bolts We still need to retain this part of the tray right here because that's what's going to hold our fuse block on here so I'm just going to make a cut right across here that way we still got one two bolts that hold this on in place all right that's all we need right there is that part now, I also did remove the temperature sensor for the battery tray. I am going to install this in the new battery box. And then I'll have to run the two wires all the way to the back to reconnect this. And before I install this piece back in there, I'm going to go ahead and remove the uh, chassis ground right here. Because one of those ground cables goes up to here. Okay, now to get the larger hole saw that I need to get into the unibody, I'm going to have to drill the top part of this out large enough to I can get the hole saw through here to get to the unibody. There we go. Now I can pass this through here, and I can drill the hole exactly where I want it. I got the uh, push on bushing in there. Now we've got no shorts, no uh, sharp metal edges or anything like that. We can pass the cable right through there. Okay, and once inside there, you got this nice channel all the way up here going up front. Now I've already put that string in there. And I've got that string coming clear out to here in the front wheel well. And pulled that plug out right there. And this plug here is to get access to the bolt that's back here for your upper control arm. All right, I'm gonna drill a hole right here. 
for the battery cable to pass through. Now I'll have this push-in bushing right there to insulate it. All right, now you can pass the cable through here. Oh. Push on bushing right here. There we go. Now I'll have to make a uh, cut in the box here for the cable to go through. All right, before I pull that in there, I want to put a this split loom on there just as a added protection. All right, now with that piece modified. And it goes in right there. Now, that hole there was being utilized to hold the uh, vacuum line in place. We'll move that holder for the vacuum line. So that's going to go right there. We need to enlarge the hole big enough to accept to go right around that plastic lip right there. So I'm using a uni bit. There we go, perfect. All right, here we got everything done under here. I got these uh, secured, these one hole straps. This being for the uh, battery temperature sensor. And these are two five eighths inch, that's a three quarter. So we're good under here. All right, here on the back side of the battery box, and then I took it clear to the one side over here, make it more in the center of the car. I drilled a hole for the battery temp sensor. Then I also drilled a hole here for the wiring to come through. All right, here's the hole for the grommet. Okay, I got my wiring right here. And then I got the part that I cut off up front right here. Get that connected and pass that through here into the cab and make up the wiring in here. This is just getting these two together. You're kind of pre-tinning them, is what you're doing. And we got one more we're going to add in here. That's the one that goes down to the starter. All right, with the uh, cable here, I got to the length that I need. And then this part going up to the alternator, we got it marked right here. We'll shorten it and put a ring terminal on here. And right now, I'm going to go ahead and pre-tin this. And then we're going to solder it onto here. Now, what I got here, it's like a uh, it's like a heat shrink, but it's got a plastic sheath in it that you're going to pull out, and then it automatically shrinks right down to that. It's perfect for this type of splice. Now with that soldered on there, 100% all the way around, I can go ahead and remove this piece of heat shrink that I put on here, which is a temporary hold. Good. Yeah, come off of there. Okay, now take this. Hopefully that will slide up over there.
that. I like that. All right, now this part of the harness is done. Now all we gotta do is uh, shorten up this one ring terminal to right here. Pulling on this. header down here. Now I can finally get to all these bolts right here. Be sure to get the valve cover off. What I really didn't cover was these straps right here to lower the battery down into place and to of course remove the battery. Um, if you don't have a battery that has a handle to it you're going to need to somehow get the battery back out of the box. I used a couple seat belts and then I got one of these Harbor Freight it, they're made for like tarps and stuff like that if you need a, a place to put a bungee strap or you know put a hook onto it you can drive a hole comes with a hole making tool and then it comes with a two-piece die thing to put the ring terminal into it and uh, worked out pretty good so now if I want to remove the battery I can undo the strap right here the tie down strap that I got to use to this is what's holding the battery in place. I can undo that and then just lift the battery right out. All right, now that we got it all put together up there, everything seems to be running just fine. Go ahead and put this cover back on. And there we have it. The only thing I'm gonna do is uh, add a battery disconnect switch right here so stay tuned for that and if you haven't ever subscribed to me before hit that subscribe button right down there and right next to it is that bell symbol hit that and that way you're going to get notifications of any upcoming videos as they come out all right well thanks for watching and please subscribe thanks <laughs>